This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Matt from Board to Bits, and today's video is sort of a follow-up to last week's video on tips for beginner debugging. This video is going to go into a little bit deeper dive of the idea of debug.log and logging messages to the console as you're trying to debug your games. Now I did mention in that video that there are some issues with this. It can be a little bit um, expensive and kind of slow your game down. But there are definitely some times that it's useful. And I would recommend this if you're, say, starting some early code and you don't have things hooked up to game objects or to UI, logging stuff to the console can be a good way to check and make sure that your code is working. Likewise, if you're trying to spot check something, if something's not working right and you just need to get some information, that's another good use of this. As well, if you need to communicate sort of edge case information, say you have a method that's supposed to return a particular value and it can't find that value, you could log a message saying why and when this is being called, you know, kind of log an error or a warning that will let yourself or your teammates know in the future that, hey, this is probably where the issue is. Because again, a big part of debugging is knowing where the problem is actually occurring and being able to solve it from there. So a few good um, uses of debugging. Some things I would not, or of debug log rather, um, some things I would not recommend it for include if you're doing multiple iterations of something, if you're say scanning through a grid, um, it wouldn't be good to debug log every single time because then that is really going to start slowing down things. Uh, likewise, I would not debug log every single frame in update because that as well is going to be slowing down each frame even incrementally, but that, especially when you're starting to try and debug your game for optimization and things like that, it's going to really kind of throw your results. So there are three, way, three main methods for debug log, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, the first is just simply debug.log, and this is a... Um, this is a method that if I hit the uh, play button here, I can show you. I've got this set up so that when I hit the L button, it will debug.log. And as you can see, what it does down here in our console is it prints a message, and it will also, it also has the opportunity to link up to an object that you kind of created or you refer to, which is your context object. In this case, I'm just referring back to the same object that is actually calling um, this. So if I click it here, you see that it kind of highlights the main camera, which is where my log example script is. I'll show that in a little bit, but I'm not gonna go through this and show you how to write it, because this is really just kind of showing a few lines of code. Um, the next one is debug log warning. And this is really, in all of my research, all I can find is this is basically just kind of a highlighted flavor of debug.log. When you do a warning, there's really one, really two things that change. If I hit W now, or I go back into my game, sorry, and then hit W, you'll see that a warning now pops up. And the only real difference here is that instead of this um, speech bubble that appears, you get a yellow triangle kind of showing it's a little bit more, a little bit um, escalated. In addition, this is technically logging as a warning. And those are really the only two changes that you see. Uh, it doesn't functionally do anything different that I can find. But this is useful because it is a little bit more prevalent. As you see, it's got the yellow, and so it's kind of drawing your eye to it. And it's a good way to say, hey, something's going wrong here. I'm going to warn you about something rather than just informing you about some value or something. So that is um, the use of log warning. And then finally, there's debug.log error. And this one, in addition to being an escalation, if I jump in here and hit E, we see that the error appears. And this obviously comes up with a red stop sign. But it also has some additional functionality, and the two main things that log.error, or sorry, debug.logerror will do for you is if you have this error pause clicked um, in the console here and have that active, then when you log an error, it will automatically pause your game at the end of that frame. It's important to note it's the end of the frame, so it's not going to get you out of an infinite loop, but it will stop the game in the frame that the moment that the error is happening so that you're not getting additional information going from there. The other thing that log error can do that is pretty nice is if you ever decide you're going to build your game and you go to your build settings and you check off this development build, what will happen is I've got actually an instance of my game running here. You'll see A, that the development build appears in the corner of the screen. But in addition, if I hit the L button and do a log, that will um, go into there is a log that I can show you guys um, that will appear in your build folder. Um, but that doesn't appear on the screen. Likewise, warning does not appear on the screen. But when you log an error, it will 
call up this development console and that same message that you have will pop up in your um, in this development console and you can hit it multiple times and it will track kind of kind of like the console in um, unity a little bit less information but you do have that opportunity with specifically log error to even call up information when you're in a built um, standalone build of your game as opposed to just being in the editor so there is one other type of debug.log, and that is log exception. However, that doesn't log um, a string and an object. It actually logs something specific called an exception, which is in kind of another level of debugging and um, programming. So we'll get into that into a future video. We're just going to stick with those first three for now. So with that said, I want to look at a few of the things that you can do with these logs beyond just logging a message. And so let's jump over to Monodevelop, and we'll see here that I've got this basic um, basic script that is really just saying, you know, if I'm pressing the key L, then to debug log, um, likewise with W, debug log warning, and for the key code E, log an error. And the first thing you'll see in all these is a string. And the string is what will be shown in the message in the console, and then they each are followed by um, some sort of object. In this case, it's just the game object that the log example is on. In this case, I'm actually just calling the log example component. You can call any component, and that will then highlight that particular, um, whatever object that component is attached to. So you don't necessarily need to say specifically, oh, you know, I want to highlight this game object. You can just say, oh, if it's, say, the light, just call the component light. In fact, that's what I'm doing here in this last one, is I'm finding the object with the type of light. So this is technically still calling the game object, but you could even just call, um, if you had a specific object that wasn't, a game object but was you know a light component or a transform or whatever whatever you put in here will then get called up so actually we can show that here if I start this up again and I call the error you'll remember that in my code here I am calling find object of type light so it's not the object that the log example is attached to so in this case when I click this even though it's attached to the main camera we're highlighting the directional light so it gives you this opportunity to even say you know Really, this is where the attention should be focused. I'm, I may be calling up this log error, but you know, take a look at this object because that's probably where the issue is. You can do things like that, which is pretty cool. Likewise, all of these logs will give you a stack trace, which will show you basically from the most from the start of whatever method call all the way through to when the actual debug.log got called. In this case, it's literally just in the update function at this line, but if you had, you know, if you started off with an update function and then it got that called a method in another object and another object, et cetera, et cetera, it would show you that path too so that you know where this, you know, kind of, you can do a root cause analysis as it were to figure out exactly where the whole thing started, which can also be very useful. So in addition to context objects, you can also put pretty much any object you want, any sort of C-sharp object, into your string. What I mean by that is, for example, here in our just simple log statement, I am putting in the component that this log example component is being called right here. And what that will do, um, when you put in any kind of component like that, what usually Unity will do is it will uh, write out its name followed by its type. So in this case, we are calling an object that is named main camera, but is actually of the type log example. So when I press the L button here, uh, let's see here. Oh, whoops, sorry, forgot that pause that because of the error pause. We see that it comes up as main camera and then parentheses log example. If I had, if I actually, I can even rewrite this to game object and hit play, we will see that now I hit L and it comes up as main camera as the game object component. So it kind of gets you even that level of granularity of being specifically what component do you want to be talking about here. In addition to um, components and game objects, you can also add in things like values. Like in this case, I have this integer up here that's really just kind of for this example, but I've got a value of five and I can put that into this string or I can um, append it to the string and it will automatically take that for you and put it into the string value for you. This is actually kind of handy too because um, if you've done anything with UI text, you know that if you try to pass in an integer or float, you need to actually call the to string method. In this case, you can kind of save that step, just drop it in and debug the log methods will handle that for you. With that said, 
There's also another really handy thing that debug logs will do, which is with structs. Things like vector threes and um, colors and things like that that are built into Unity, it will automatically give you not just that it's a vector three, but it will give you the constituent parts of it. I can actually show you that. If I say here, instead of value is this integer value, let's say vector three dot up, which should be uh, zero, one, zero. Now, if I go back and um, recompile this, hit play, and I hit W, we see that instead of just saying value is a vector three, we actually get zero, one, zero written in that format. So in addition to putting in any pretty much any object type that you want, the ones that are built into Unity, you get even more additional information. And this can be something, this can be very handy for getting something like say a transforms position or rotation. You can get that information right away. Lastly, um, you'll notice too that I have in those uh, console logs a lot of different colors and stuff going on. And the reason for that is that I wanted to show the fact that you can apply what is called rich text to your um, logs as well. And what this does is it creates things such as the, um, you can add a color. So in this case, our um, log is changing to blue, as is the actual component. You can kind of start a change color in a string, add in a component or some sort of value, and then finish off that color. Um, you can also change the size of text. If I go back here and press uh, E for the error, you'll notice that that error message is a little bit bigger. I can even go kind of crazy here. We'll say something like uh, 32. Let's see if that'll compile automatically or if it has to. No, I do have to stop it first, okay and probably, oh, and save that file. Hit play. And now we see we get this really big error message is actually kind of breaking the formatting a little bit there. But um, you do have that opportunity to change sizes as well as colors and you can bold and italicize fonts as well. And the very nice thing is that the, the sizes won't change in that build um, developer console, but the color will, and I believe it will bold or italicize as well. So you can even add that extra level um, if you really wanna highlight something. So these are basically the main um, things that you can do within um, Unity so that when you're logging information, you're getting a little bit more valuable information out of that versus just saying, you know, something bad happened or not getting any information at all. Lastly, I do want to quickly show you that if you are in a uh, build of your game, you can actually get your logged information there too, even the stuff that isn't logged into that developer's console. Um, all you have to do for that, I'll jump back to where that build was. This is that log example I was showing you before. You'll also get this um, data file folder. And if you jump in there and go to this output log, you will see that you're gonna get a lot of information here. But if you scroll down toward the bottom here, you're gonna see that you get things like, this is a, this is, was the, when I pressed the log button, this was when I pressed the warning button, and then this is where I pressed the error button. And it still will give you that um, stack trace as well, so you can see kind of where that is coming from and what ultimately led to it being printed. Um, and again, this is also not um, just the errors that we saw on the screen, but also any warnings and logs so that you can still have that paper trail and kind of go back and see, oh, did something happen here? Maybe I didn't see it in game, but did a log or a warning get called that I should know about? And with that, that's actually gonna wrap up this video. Um, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into some of these log things. There's actually even more to the debug class. There's things you can do um, to kind of check how the game is running or even visualize things in your um, scene view that are handy too, as well as just other um, tricks through MonoDevelop and using things like breaks and breakpoints to um, get even finer control to really hone down and find how things are working in your game. But we'll get to those in future videos. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.